Hi guys, this is Mark Davis at Optimum Technology Transfer. In a previous video we looked at creating a chart object on a worksheet simply by taking a range of data. I use the uh, keyboard shortcut Alt and F1 and Alt and F1 is the keyboard shortcut to create a chart object based upon a particular selection. Yeah, so this chart is as we can clearly see here from the highlighting based upon that selection in the worksheet itself. Now what I'd like to do is I'd like to take it a little bit further because well watch what happens if let's say for example I've got some new data in so data for 2014 apparently the profit gone up a little bit what happens to the uh, what happens to the chart well of course nothing because the chart is not dynamic and I'd like to make that happen of course what I could do is I can click and select and I can drag down and there we go but that's a little bit tedious, a little bit laborious to say the least. Let me just control Z a couple of times on that. So that's the situation that we've got at the moment. Yeah, an okay chart, but far too static. So what I'm going to do is to have a look at creating what are called dynamic named ranges so that we can then use those dynamic named ranges to achieve what we're hoping to achieve with this particular chart to make it dynamic. Uh, creating dynamic named ranges um, in Excel uh, involves the use of the offset function in combination with count A. Yeah, so there's a count A, there's going to be a count A nested inside my offset. Let's have a look at exactly how this does work. Let me control and F3. I've got a couple of named ranges already set up. Yeah, so profit refers to those cells. Yeah, now it looks like I've gone down one row too many. Um, using the name manager, I'm sure you already know, but I'll just modify that. Do the same with the year. Let's have a look. Check it out. Yeah, it's gone down one row too many. Yeah, so tick or check, absolutely fine. So let's have a look at it. Profit. There we go. You can see the marquee in the background. Year. There we go. Again, you can see the marquee in the background. So that's how those two named ranges stand at the moment. Yeah, let me have a look at the design and select data. Let me click profit and choose edit. Now it's B2 colon B5, uh, B6, I beg your pardon at the moment. I'm going to just change that for the profit figures. And I'm going to simply use the word profit, which of course is the name of the range. Click OK. I'm going to click the edit for horizontal axis as well. My years. Select and type in the word year. And click OK. And click OK. There's no change of course made there at the moment because I haven't put that dynamic bit in just yet. What I'm now going to do is I'm going to go back and make a change. So let's work with the year first of all in column A. So press my tab key. So as you just saw of course that's what that particular range is referring to at the moment. Yeah, it refers to. Now this is where offset comes in. Equals offset. Open my brackets. The first argument in the offset function is a reference that you want to kind of start from which is A1, which is where my year heading is, then a comma. The second argument is how many rows you want to go down from that starting point, as it were. Well, I want to go down one row. That's where my first year figure is, or my first year label, effectively, is. Then a comma. Do you want to go across? No, I don't. I want to stay in that same column. So I'm going to say zero columns. Don't move, effectively, comma. This is where the really rather interesting bit comes in, because I'm going to count A on column A, close off my brackets yeah now I'm gonna put a minus one in here because otherwise I'll have one cell too many effectively yeah the height will be one row too high that's why I've subtracted one comma what about the width of the range well just one column that's what I'm dealing with at the moment close off my brackets make sure I'm pairing up all of my brackets click tick or check everything seems to be okay exactly the same or very very similar indeed for the profit except for the fact I'm looking to get information from column B it's all about column B so I'm going to use an offset function once again open my brackets starting from B1 this time comma how many rows do I want to go down well the first profit figure that I'm interested in picking up is one row down from where I am at the moment comma stay in the same column comma again another count A open my bracket. It's all about column B this time. Close off my brackets. I don't want to go down too far. That will mean I go down too far. That will mean the height will be one row too many. So I subtract one. 
comma it's only one column close off my brackets I think all my pairing is done okay there I'll soon find out of course I tick or check it's all looking good so profit now refers to year now refers to check out my marquees guys check out my marching ends on my marquees in the background click close let's have a look at this design and select data click profit choose edit see profit in there that's all fine check this one we've done this before haven't we that's all fine as well so now because I've changed the refers to for both the year range and the profit range to include an offset with a count A nested inside it I can do this which is really rather cool isn't it profits have taken a dip and my chart changes automatically I've now got data for 2015 profits have gone back up again 2015 is now incorporated, included appropriately in the dynamic profit chart. Great thing of course is if I do this and I delete again my chart changes automatically. Rather nice. Let me just control Z to undo that. So that's creating dynamic charts using dynamic ranges the dynamic range idea uses the offset function with count A nested inside it. I'm going to control S to save the latest changes because what I'm also going to do, let me just move this just a touch, I go back into the name manager. So there's the profit example, there's the refers to it. I'm going to copy that guys and I'm going to paste it into there and I'm going to zoom and I'm going to leave that with you guys there on screen. Yeah, so that's the kind of formula that you guys will need to create to incorporate this dynamic chart idea into your Excel models. Now I'm going to actually create, I'm going to take that a little bit further in a third charts video. Come back and find out how that's going to work. I'll leave that with you guys now. So that's it from me, Mark Davis at Optimum Technology Transfer. Take care and bye-bye. Do remember, check out the evolution of this idea in a subsequent video. Bye-bye.